Sometimes an irrigation valve will not open. That can be caused by an electrical problem or a mechanical problem with the valve. In this video, we will review the troubleshooting steps to identify the cause of the problem and help you get it resolved. Our process assumes that you have already checked out the electrical operation of the irrigation controller. If you haven't completed those first steps, we recommend watching the video called Troubleshooting a Zone That Will Not Operate. At the valve, we will follow a process that uses a volt ohm meter to diagnose any electrical problems. Using a meter properly and systematically can save you from unnecessarily replacing components. A good first check for a valve that won't open is to see if it operates manually. This is a good quick check before you dig into electrical troubleshooting. Manual operation is accomplished with some valves by turning a lever that turns the solenoid, or turning the solenoid itself a quarter turn. The lever or solenoid are usually labeled. Turn the solenoid no more than half a turn to activate the manual feature. Tighten it back up to close the valve. For older valves, you can use a bleed knob to release a small amount of water to cause the diaphragm to lift and the valve to open. Loosen the bleed screw until water comes out, but don't remove it completely. Tighten it to close the valve. If manual operation works, it's time to proceed to electrical tests. Using the voltage meter, we will first verify the output from the irrigation controller to the valve. Identify the zone wire and common wire coming from the controller to our valve. Cut into these two wires and remove enough insulation so that you can test for presence of voltage with the meter. We will perform this test with the voltage meter in the volts AC or vac dial position. In this case, our problem zone is number 4. Activate zone 4 from the controller manually to send current to the wires to the valve box. With the controller activated, touch the red probe to the zone wire coming from the controller and the black probe to the common wire coming from the controller. Be sure to make good contact. The meter should read approximately 24 volts AC. Normal readings will be between 22 and 30 volts. If you have adequate voltage coming from the controller, that's good news. If you don't, recheck the output at the controller for the zone with your meter. If the current is leaving the controller, but not reaching you at the valve box, you'll need to identify where the break is between the two. A wire tracking or fault finding device can help you trace the wire path to find the fault. In this next test, we will use the volt ohm meter to check the health of the solenoid. Since we've already disconnected the wires to the solenoid, let's cut off the old splices and strip the wires from the solenoid. Set the meter to the ohm setting, which measures electrical resistance. This is often indicated by the omega symbol. In this setting, the meter will send current through the solenoid to measure its health. Touch the red probe to the one lead and the black probe to the other. With valve solenoids, it doesn't matter which is which. A normal reading for a valve solenoid will be 20 to 60 ohms, depending on the type of solenoid valve. If you're getting a normal ohm reading, but the valve is not activating, it is very likely that the issue is related to a mechanical problem within the valve itself, rather than an electrical problem. A low ohm reading, below 20 ohms, or a very high reading above 50 ohms indicates a problem with the solenoid itself. Replace it with a new solenoid and rewire with new waterproof splices. If you've got current coming to the valve and the solenoid checks out good, it may be that one or both of the splices we cut out could have been the problem. With the power to the valve off, splice the wire from the controller back onto the valve leads temporarily. Then, activate the circuit from the controller. If the valve opens, eliminating the bad splice solved your problem. You can re-splice with waterproof connectors and you're done. If the valve still doesn't open, you verified all of the electrical tests. It's time to disassemble the valve to look for mechanical problems. Or, if it is a smaller, less expensive valve, you may find replacing it the most economical solution. Watch our videos to learn more about irrigation electrical troubleshooting. 